Okay, in lab zero one, we are going to install this software. Chrome browser is not required. For example, you can use a file Fox. We are going to download the Visual Studio Windows SDK Python 3 Git. I would like to download and install a Chrome browser. Chrome browser. Okay, now I have a Chrome browser. You may use your Chrome browser or Firefox. Either one is okay. Now the second software, the major software, Visual Studio and Windows SDK. Scroll down, where is uh, Windows, uh, Windows Studio and Windows SDK. Here, go to Visual Studio. Windows SDK will be installed together with uh, Visual Studio. Yeah, this is a Windows 10 SDK. You may download and install or download this ISO as a separate component. component. But uh, here you can see this one. You can get the Windows 10 SDK in two ways. First way, install it from this page, selecting the download link here. Or by selecting Windows 10 SDK, Management components of the Visual Studio and in 19 installer. So, which was the second way? Visual Studio 2019 is a community version. Is a free. Okay, I would like to save under IDS 330. Saved here. So you can save all your software over there. And the download completed. Um, Professor, quick question. Yeah. Uh -huh. If we already have Visual Studio installed, how can we tell if we have the um the SDK installed? I'm not sure if I did it like when I installed that a while ago. Okay, you need to run your Visual Studio installer and uh, ah, okay. customize your installation again. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It will take a long time to install Visual Studio and Windows SDK. The components we need is a C sharp and a C. So here, desktop development with the C plus plus, and the C sharp part. You can see we have so many components. Now, which one is for the C sharp? Here. We have mobile development with C++, mobile development with .NET. We are only uh, going to do a 
with desktop. So .NET desktop development. Here you can see this uh, C sharp, F sharp .NET corner .NET. So we will choose this one. Desktop and mobile. These two. .NET desktop development and development and desktop development with C++. Now, for that SDK, we need to find in the option uh, components in the desktop development with C++. Here, let's see what is that uh, SDK. Individual components. Here, the Windows SDK it will be installed. Uh, will be chosen automatically if we choose C plus plus desktop development. So it's chosen automatically with Windows 10 SDK. You may use this uh, latest version. You know, just use this default version is good enough. You will go to its uh, website to have a look at the Windows SDK. Here, this is the latest version, 19.04. So let's choose that uh, latest version. The lang language packs, this is the interface language English. Install location, you may change the location, I just choose the default location. Okay, that's it. We have C Shop and C++ and also that uh, Windows SDK. You can see the individual component Windows SDK is chosen. Now we, we may install it. The space it takes uh, 11.22 gigabytes. So it will take lots of time. Uh, we may remove some components to save our time. For example, live share. Don't need a live share. The experimental feature, we don't need it. Google test, post test. We can go to these uh, individual components to see what components we may uh, remove them. Let's um, scroll from the top to the bottom. .NET, if we have .NET, we don't need a .NET core. Okay, it relies this one. This .NET Core 6.1. So for this uh, framework, you may just choose the latest one, but some software may need this uh, .NET framework earlier version. This one, uh, UI tool for developers to build, train, and ship custom machine learning model. So we don't need machine learning. Don't need applications, don't need SDK. SQL Server, we don't need it. Okay, it requires.
Okay, it looks like we cannot uh, remove many. C sharp. F sharp, I don't need F sharp. What it says is required for the desktop development. So we only need a C plus and a C sharp. Entity framework. Okay, we just uh, reduced a little bit. Now it will take maybe half an hour to complete. Depends on your computer. Okay, my installation succeeded. On the next software, Python 3 and Git, you can go to Python 3 and this is Git to download both software. Python, let's just download this uh, latest one, 3.9.1. I saved and my address resulted to us. Save them all here. And this kit, we download this uh, latest one for Windows. Then install Python 3.9 and kit. Install for all users and install now. Here it will be installed under this place. I would like to customize installation. I want to change this place. Install for all users. Here it will be installed under this folder. Okay, it's done. Now I install it. I chose the default options. It says Vim, but I didn't install Vim. 
there are some other text editors you may choose with the one you like as is a whim as the default one it decide so let's put all the four options Okay, my installation of uh, all the software, the required software completed. Python 3, Git, Windows SDK, Visual Studio. Uh, my step one is complete. For those students, if you're interested in you want to, you may feel free to go. And now the major uh, step. Download and compare source code file in C and C, uh, C Sharp program on the Windows port. So how do we download it? I click, come to the home page of this course. This part here, there is a code. Okay, don't arrow and copy this uh, link. Yeah, copy this link. Open your file explorer. I would like uh, to create a folder and uh, my address 330 create a left zone. Here you can see you have uh, open with Visual Studio, Git GUI here, Git Bash here. We know these two are created by your Git and this one by the Visual Studio. Now I create a folder here. Quite a lab zero one. In this empty place here, I use uh, run this uh, git bash here. I type git clone and paste the link I copied. And uh, right now everything is uh, downloaded into my folder. It created a subfolder called IDS 330. These are the contents from the GitHub. So we go to labs, lab01, find all the code. Here we own the Windows and the part. We can control C, copy it. Go back to our uh, IDS 330 folder and put the code under this last zero one. How you compare this uh, program? One Windows program and uh, four C sharp source code. So let's uh, compare the Windows program first. Here, there's a win to pipe dash uh, chair.c. We need to compare this one and all four C sharp files. How do you compare this win32 dash pad dash chair to C? We need the C compiler we installed with the Visual Studio. Scroll down, find your Visual Studio. Here is my Visual Studio 2019. And this is a folder. Use this uh, develop command prompt. We use this one. Here 
it will set up the environment for this uh, compiler. Now we can use a CD and uh, copy this location. CD means change directory. So come to that folder, right? You see this folder, at registry set lab 01 and open. If you use DLR, DLR will show the subfolders and the files under this uh, wing folder. You can see under the wing folder, you see how uh, this file show up here, winset 2 dash pep dash chat c The C and C++ compiler and uh, this command it's called CFUC compiler. We can use the uh, forward slash question mark to show the help how to use this uh, command line tool. Now you can see there are lots of options. Yeah, the C, C++ plus, plus, uh, compiler options, optimization, code generation, press enter to continue. Uh, press uh, and uh, continue. Uh, auto profile, how do we specify the auto profile name? The auto profile, the files are generated by the compiler. Let's see where we, we specify the, the file name of the executable file. We specify like this forward slash fe float as a file name. This is a name, the executable file. Preprocessors, there are so many uh, options, but we don't need uh, so many. We, we are just needed uh, one or two options. So if you want to learn more, you may go through its uh, manual. So many of us options. So we, if we just type compiler followed by our program file name, press enter, you will see it will compile fast and it will generate an executable file name instead of dash pep dash chat.exe. You can compare the output here. I have an executable file here, winsage to dash pep dash child. This is an executable file, the application. And the dot C is the C source code. This is an object file, the intermediate file. We don't need that. So how do we run that uh, winsage to dash pep dash child? You just type this, uh, this one, uh, exe, to run it. What is the best way? You put a dot followed by the backward slash. The dot means the calendar folder. So we want to find this DXE file and the calendar folder. So I press enter. You see uh, nothing show up. It's fine. Your completion, the completion is successful. This is what we need. We need a compilation tool set up. How do you exit? You press Ctrl C. Ctrl C to stop it. And you can see that the constitution of it. And the program is stopped. When you check the source code, now you can open it. It will open with the Visual Studio by default. Right. We just do by default. But we just do is a heavy tool. I don't like to use it. I did the source code. Since we are going to learn 
the code later process. So it's okay if you don't understand what this program is doing. Here, it uh, opens the standard input and read the characters that you type in the input and the write to the output. You can see here the read file from the pipe. I then print out something here. You can compare the behavior of this program with the source code. You press enter, then you type something, for example, hello, press enter. And you will see the hello is what you typed, and that is a child. Hello, you can see the, like this one, this part, and that percent s is replaced by this uh, hello. And this hello is saved in this buffer, this variable. Then output this one, output this uh, right, uh, this less than symbol. We can try it again. Hello, press enter. I see the same output, but you see this less than is moved to the second line because when after I type the hello, I press the enter, the enter put a new line after the hello. That's why this less than is uh, output in the second line, in the following line. So this is a program of this uh, instead to pair child.c and we will learn this one late modules and in lab one you only need to check whether your compilation tool worked now you see the c compilation tool worked the second uh, task we want to check whether all those uh, c sharp files can be compiled here c sharp here Here yeah, under my windows, uh, you can use cd dot dot dot, dot means uh, go to the parent folder. The parent folder is uh, this is lab zero one. Right? Type dir, you will see we have two subfolder. One is shop, the other one is uh, win. You can use cd cd in change directory. Go to c shop. The type dir, now you see all. Uh, the four C sharp source code files here. The four C sharp source code files here. And now we can compare them uh, one by one. First, let's compare those two files with TSP, TSP server, .cs, and TSP client. .cs. These are two uh, networking programs. This is C, uh, the C sharp. Command is called CSC. CS, C sharp. The first CS means C sharp. The last C means compiler. So C sharp compiler, CSC. You follow by the name of the source code. T client, CS, press enter. Now you see a TCP command. Executor file is generated. CSC. TCP server, press enter. You see a server is uh, generated. Usually when we write a networking program, one is a server, the other one is a client. The client will connect to the server. So we need to run the server first. In this empty space, you press your shift key, right click, then you see there is an open PowerShell window here. 
I can't go down. PowerShell window. This uh, black one is the command prompt. And this uh, blue one is the Windows PowerShell. So in this uh, Windows PowerShell, you can run that this one, GCP server. Now you see something output. It says the service waiting for connection. But now in your command prompt, you can run this uh, TCP client. Exe. Right, did you see the output? Here you let's uh, put them side by side. The client side, it has sent hello from clients and received hello from the client. Press enter to connect the server side. The server side first is waiting for a connection or connected, then received hello from client and sent hello from client, then waiting for a connection. And on the client side, you will press enter, you will stop. So the server sent this one hello from client and the client received this hello from client. So in the socket, you may change the, uh, say, hello from server. So you may change it, and then your client side will say hello from uh, server. On the client side, you press enter. It enter to continue, now it just stop. So if you want to change want to change that message in that server re reply, you can open it. Because the Visual Studio is uh, so heavy, I would like to use this notepad to open this code, but the syntax highlight is gone. For a lightweight uh, text editor, I suggest to use a Visual Studio code. So let's try to install Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code. Download this Visual Studio Code for the Windows. 64 bit. Let's use a system installer. Let's install it a system wide. So system installer. I save the file. Again, I save under these tools. Then install it. Just choose all the default options. Wait a minute. Here, it says add open with code option to the Windows Explorer file context menu, director menu. So these are two good things. And the register code for editor for supported file types. Okay, we choose all this stuff. Okay, it's done. Now, if you, you want to open this source code, you can right click. Now you see uh, open with the code. During the installation, we check that the checkbox add to this part of the menu, open with the code. Okay, now it uh, show up and it's the syntax highlighted. And then ask us to install recommended extension of C is okay, install it. Okay, it's finished.
Okay, now we can see that uh, send from client. Can scroll down to see the stuff. Why it is, we didn't see a send from client in this source code, right? Uh, we see something uh, data equals data to app. What's that's the data sent by the client? So you may, uh, if you're familiar with the C sharp, you can change it by yourself. Today we just verify our C sharp compiler uh, worked. Now the other two files, you can use the same way to compare and run it. The server is still keep running. So I can use corner C to stop it. Okay, now my TCP server is closed. For that uh, sync server and sync client, you can uh, compare. Can we compare it under this Windows PowerShell? If you type C, SC, sync client.cs, press enter, you will see some problem. The term csc is not recognized as name or uh, command lit because the environment, development environment is not set up for this one. When we open this one, we open the developer command prompt. So that uh, the development environment is set up. So we need to compare here. CSC sync client.cs. Sync server.cs. Again, we can we need to run the server first, then run the client just as a guess because we didn't know what they are doing. And we will learn this program in later modules. Currently, just the guess we run the server first. Oops. The sync server exe. It says waiting for connection. Now on the client side, we run that uh, sync client.exe or just uh, sync client. Let's see the, the output sort of connected to this one is uh, IPv6. Address and this is a port number, and you will learn later in this course about networking program. Some um, introduction for those students. If you know network program, you will be familiar with this uh, output echo test because this is a test and end. On the server side, you see first we're waiting for the connection, then a text received. Receive this one. This one is sent from the client. Right, this one, this is a test URF. I'm waiting a connection again. The server is uh, keep running, and the client once it sent that uh, message, it uh, quit and run again. You can see it sends the message to the server again. Okay, on the server side, I can you see to stop this program? And now you see our environment is uh, set up successfully. You can use that git to download all the source code and use your Visual Studio code to open and edit this uh, uh, source code. And use a uh, with the Visual Studio and uh, that uh, SDK, we install the compilation environment and the development environment. For those students 
for Perio Visual Studio, you may use Visual Studio to compile this program, but uh, you know it's a heavy tool. And with the command line, you can see it's quite uh, simple. Just one line of command, then you can compare and this program. With one more line of command, then you can test this program. So this is uh, the step two, we complete this one. Now for the review question. For the review question, the binary prefix, you may open it for reference here. With this table, you can know that K, M, G, T, P, what do they mean? Right? One M is uh, one zero two four times K. So each letter is increased by one zero two four times. The kilo, the micro, the gig, this uh, tower, but here it says Daddy GB with this IS name. Usually we say it uh, Tello, Giga, Mega, Kilo. We use these names for this uh, binary prefix. We can use the same name. The election name is this stuff. I'm not going to pronounce this. And now, how do we convert from gigabyte to megabyte to kilobyte? Now, pay attention. This is lowercase b means bit. This uppercase b means byte. We know one byte equals eight bit. So, this calculation is uh, quite straightforward. We can use a uh, Online unit converters to do this. Uh, to do this one, if so, you want to take screenshot of that uh, online converter. I would like to write out the calculation step. You need to show your calculation step. Left zero one. The real questions. For example, the first one. Yeah, you know how many megabytes? We know one gigabyte equals one zero two four megabytes, right? So you do this number times one zero two four. How many are megabytes? No, kilobytes. We know one megabyte equals one zero to four times uh, kilobytes. So you can copy this one. Let's clear and the times one zero to four again. Now for this uh, one kilobyte, we know it uh, equals one zero to four bytes. Right? So you can copy this one. Let's clear and uh, times one zero to four again. Now for terabyte, we know one gigabyte, one terabyte equals uh, one zero two four gigabytes. We need to divide here for this uh, terabyte. We need to divide one zero two four to get this uh, terabyte. So use your calculate to com compute this uh, these formulas to get the results. No, for this uh, bit, we know one byte is uh, eight bit. And here is a kicker, here is a kicker. So we know we only need times eight, right? Corner we times eight. So this is a uh, This is a question. So you need to show your steps. In your lab report. Now, question B. Question B is talk about the bit rate. Bit rate. So we have a time unit. S means second. Megabytes per second. Because how many gigabytes per second? How many gigabytes per minute? 
how many uh, kilobytes per second and uh, how many megabits. So you need to pay attention. The B is bit. And the BPS, BPS means uh, bit per second. So how do you calculate this one? You need to refer to that table, right? To that binary prefix table here. You don't remember. So this mac to, to giga, both is a byte. So we only need to, uh, from mac to giga, we need to divide this number by one zero two four. Now, how many uh, gigabyte per minute? So we only need to change the second to minute. So how do we change that? Right from GB per second to GB per minute. So we use this number. And you see, now how do we convert the second to minute? No, one minute equals uh, 60 seconds. So on this, uh, if we times 60 here, then we have 60 seconds. Then it uh, convert to one minute. So we also need to time the 60 on the numerator. But we also need to time 60 on the numerator. This is uh, how many gigabytes per minute. Now, two kilobytes per second, we can sort from here. We know one megabyte equals one zero to four kilobyte per second here per second. Does not change. We only need to change this m to k. So times one zero two four. Now here is the bit per minute. So we can convert from this part. And you see, we know one byte equals eight bits. So we need to convert times eight. Now that a second, that a second convert to minute. So on the numerator, we also need to times 60. So this is, that's it. Now, how do we convert to bit per second? You may choose from, uh, let's say we can choose from this one. There's a kilobyte to uh, per second. Can you see it? Can we put it here? Here is per second, per second. Now we need to change this AB to bit. We know one AB equals one zero two four byte. One byte equals eight bit times eight. So that's it. You may use online calculators to confirm your calculation. So this is a uh, sub question B. Now for this one, question two, rank the following storage systems from slowest to fa fast fastest. And we wanted to know how to measure the speed with the data rate, right? The data rate. Sh show your references. So what drugs you based to answer this question? Which one is fast, which one is sl slow? Here in our lecture, we have discussed, uh, we have put uh, links over there. The overview. Here we have, uh, you need to convert converters. You can use these converters to do it online. Now, this is the interface bit rate. These are the speed. Here you can see the uh, speed kilobit per second, kilobit per second, and so kilobyte per second for various uh, interface. Now, for that. Uh, Question. Here is ask us for these uh, storages. So how do we find those storages? You can find from here, this lecture and the computers, those storages are on computers. 
get the computer scroll down to find the hardware, hardware we have uh, memories, computer data storage. And you can see the hierarchy of storage. So you need to check this hierarchy, then you'll find the speed, which one is fast, which one is slow. And also the computer memory. When you scroll down, you can, uh, I think, under this uh, link, you can also see the speed, which one is fast, which one is slow. You need to read this uh, carefully. I put a link and uh, the solution. Here I use this uh, memory hierarchy. Here under this uh, memory hierarchy, they clearly described the speed of, for example, registers, cache, RAM, and so on. So in your report, you need to not only put the reference, we also need to add some explanation, some like this one. Process register, registers, there was the fattest possible access, a few thousand bytes in size. You can read and uh, summarize this uh, reference to answer this question.